All right, guys. Well, this is a valve body off of a uh, 5R55S on a 2004 Ford Explorer, and uh, this had a failed torque converter, and uh, also the uh, pump was broke. Uh, this is the pump, and uh, the pump is broken. So uh, it had an excessive amount of very finely ground metal, and what I found is that uh, this uh, cooler valve here. Uh, it has a thermostatic uh, or a thermostat thermostatic valve and uh, It had a piece of aluminum stuck in there inside. I haven't cleaned the valve body yet I, I just took all the valves from this side of the valve body, which are those right there uh, I'm gonna do the opposite side once I clean these up and then I re reassemble those in there, but the problem is is that uh, this works with temperature and uh, I mean, once once it starts to uh, uh, heat up, uh, the, this little uh, deal ex ex expands and it opens the valve uh, for a cooler flow. And what, what was going on is uh, it had a piece of aluminum here, so it was stuck in the no cooler uh, position. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and clean this up. And uh, to correct this, I mean, I'll just leave the thermostatic valve in there and I'll just put the valve in first and then put the spring uh, on last. And what this does is that it keeps the valve with a full-time uh, full uh, converter charge, full-time uh, lubrication. Okay, so uh, I mean, I just uh, tore this down and I'm going to install this. This is very simple, uh, very easy shift kit uh, to correct some issues. And once I'm on it, I mean, I'm going to uh, you know, explain to you why it is very important that the solenoid switch valve, I mean, it's very, very clean. I'm going to go ahead and start cleaning this valve body. Uh, I'm going to use my bench buddies, you know, to polish those bores. Uh, it's, uh, these two valves here were, were stuck open. And uh, whenever you see a lot of metal, I mean, it's better just to take the valves out and uh, work on them like that. Uh, clean the valve body real good and reassemble it back together. Uh, all right, well, let me finish cleaning this valve body. Once I have everything cleaned up, uh, we'll go for, uh, with the components of the kit, install the shift kit, and, uh, and we go from there. Okay, so I got all the, the valve body already cleaned up. Got most of the valves in there. Uh, now, uh, I, already, I already have the transmission assembled and the pump is already on the, on the transmission itself, but uh, it comes with this uh, flow control valve assembly. And uh, sometimes when the flow control valve uh, gets stuck open, the vehicle will not move forward or reverse. It won't move at all. Uh, that it's included in the kit, but it's already installed on the transmission. This is the uh, original uh, flow control valve, and uh, they wear on the inside, and they create a little step. And sometimes uh, they get cocked sideways a little bit on the step, and I mean, there's it just bleeds off the fluid, and uh, there's no engagements. Uh, okay, so uh, also I already installed the ceiling rings on the transmission. Sorry about that. Got this thing upside down. It comes with the pump alignment tool. I mean, that's why I like this little kit for pump alignment. Uh, it tells you to uh, watch out for this hole. That's the overdrive planetary gear uh, uh, lubrication. Uh, let's see what else. It comes the uh, 5R55S and W. I mean, it comes with instructions for both. And uh, for this page, no uh, has no bottom plate like this one here. This is a uh, N, like on a N Lincoln LS, and uh, S and W, it's, you know, it's, it's this valve body here. Okay, so we're going to use this page, and uh, we need to install these pressure relief uh, valves here. One in uh, this location, which is here, and one in this location, which is here. Okay, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, install this valve back in there. I mean, I had most of the valves installed except for this one. And I already have this uh, pre-assembled, but we're gonna go ahead and assemble the other one. And I'm gonna show you what that is, what's in there. It's just a little check ball and a spring. Okay, so we put this here. Lay the valve body down. And I'm gonna get a little uh, screw that screws on to the uh, end cap, just to hold it a little bit. And I'm gonna get me a flat screwdriver, a little bitty, Flat screwdriver and get this thing out. 
Sometimes it's a little trick, sometimes I don't want to hold. Uh, I'll just go ahead and get a pick. Sometimes they hold pretty good, sometimes they don't. Go ahead and remove this thing. It's kind of hard to get to, it's kind of deep in there. There we go. Put the retaining clip there. And uh, let's assemble, let's get this valve out of the side. And let's assemble this pressure relief little uh, bushing here. Check valve goes in first. Then our spring. And I'm gonna use a paper clip to get the cotter pin through. Push down on the spring with the paper clip. Get your cotter pin halfway there. And then get your cotter pin out. And then push it all the way through. Fold the ends, both of them. There we go. Get that to the side over there. Get the clip. And now we install this. And our retainer, our new retainer. All right, so we got these two parts done here. Now let's go to the other side. And I didn't install the, this yet. This is our, for lockup. And this is the old one. And they do get stuck. And uh, see, like this one. They do get stuck and they get wore out. And it is included. I just put a little bit of uh, assembly lube on the spring just for uh, easy of installation. Oh, and I have that piece of metal that was stuck on that. I'll just go ahead and put this uh, regulator or R clip. Looks like an R. This valve actually works very, very good. They used to have uh, include a uh, on off instead of PWM like this uh, to on off conversion valve. But uh, I noticed that on the V8 Lincoln LSs, I mean, it was very, lockup was very firm. Okay, this is the old dry servo regulator. Take that spring off, and then it comes with two yellow springs. We put one inside the other, install it in here, and uh, install our return spring. Get another screwdriver. Okay, so there we have it. Overdrive server regulator. Uh, let's see what's it, what else is on the, on the shift kit. Okay, so we have our valve body laid out like on the picture here that we see. So now we are going to install a green spring here. We already put the two yellow springs on the overdrive server regulator. Uh, now we're gonna put a green spring here and we do the same thing. We get our little bolt, screw it on the uh, end plug. Get our little flat screwdriver, just stick it in between there. Sometimes they come out they come out very easily. Yeah, it's not it's not holding. There we go. Get our retaining clip out. Get our spring. Remove our spring. And uh we get the green one. There's a red one also here, but the red the red one is for the uh, N models, 5R55N. Okay, drop our spring in there. And plug. And our retaining clip. This is a very simple valve body to work on. Well, I mean, once you get all the valves out, I mean, it's very simple. So we've done this page three already. Uh, this is the lockup bushing. I mean, uh, the clip uh, creates a groove on the on the uh, on this right here, and it gets stuck. It's very hard to get out. I mean, you you get your uh, bias scripts or whatever to grab it and uh, get it out or uh, hit it from the front. So this is the new valve. It used to be an on-off valve, but now they uh, went back to the factory style, which is uh, which is better. I agree with that 100%. Uh, page number five, it's the uh, 
in valve body and here we see this double springs right here the white springs the 4-3 valve uh, is very common that they break and I, I've seen this uh, years past a lot and uh, I believe you only have first second and first second and third uh, or just first and second I can't remember but you will have a uh, missing gears and it comes with uh, two springs instead of one and the red spring uh, reversing hivet it's on this side valve bodies are totally different from the N and the S and W uh, don't get them mixed up the cases are different as well and of course uh, servobore.com uh, I have a video on uh, installing the uh, servo bore repair sleeves and uh, if you want to get the tool I mean you go to that website get it from them and uh, I mean that's it uh, now it is very important that this valve right here uh, solenoid regulator I know I said I mentioned the uh, solenoid switch valve solenoid switch valve is on Chrysler but uh, we're working on Ford this valve right here the solenoid regulator valve uh, if this valve is hanging up for any reason you're gonna have some uh, uh, solenoid codes some false solenoid codes Sometimes, you know, the overdrive planet fails and there's a lot of uh, big chunks of metal and gets stuck in here and then it gets stuck in here as well on this valve. These are the two main valves that, that create a lot of issues. This one, I mean, uh, it had, these two valves were, were severely, uh, they were stuck open, severely stuck. Uh, I can't remember which one else, that one. This one was stuck as well. Uh, so uh, there's a lot of valves that gets, that get hung up. But if you have a clean unit and you have having issues, uh, I mean, more than likely that, or, or false solenoid code, more than likely that your uh, solenoid regulator valve, it's stuck. If it's stuck open, or if, it's, if there's a piece of metal stuck like in between here, and it doesn't regulate, uh, you will have good reverse, uh, you know, uh, rolling. But when you uh, put your foot on the accelerator, it'll cut loose. That means that your solenoid regulator valve is not functioning properly. properly. Okay, you may be asking yourselves, okay, so why did I did this? Let me, uh, I mean, first is uh, to have a full-time uh, cooler flow. And let me just show you how this valve works. Let me go ahead and take it apart again. Put the retaining clip here, the end plug. I hope I, hope I can explain this better now. When you heat this up or when the, when it, when you first fill the transmission up with fluid, I mean, uh, you go for a test drive, you may think that it's full, but it's not because the converter is partially empty. And uh, the reason for that is that you don't have no cooler flow when it's cold. You come back to the shop, you check the fluid, the fluid level, and the uh, fluid level is low. Uh, so basically, what it does is this uh, thermostatic valve, it pushes, it pushes the valve, see, see here? This is an exhaust. I mean, you can see through, and whenever whenever the spring is there, it's on it's on a cold position. It's like that. Now, when the thermostatic valve starts to work, it uh, closes this circuit, and now you you're gonna have a cooler flow. Okay, so uh, that's exactly what you want. And I, th I think I showed this on uh, on another video. Uh, and I showed the seminar book, after a seminar, and uh, I mean, it shows uh, hydraulic draw diagrams for, uh, you know, for the N, for the S, for the W, you know, how this uh, thermostatic valve works. But this is how I'm going to do it. This is how I am going to leave it. All right, well, let me go get the spacer plate and the valve, and the valve body gaskets. Okay, two check balls, check ball locations. There's only two, one here and one here. There's only two locations for check balls. One right there, one right there. Unlike the 5R55E, it has uh, some uh, other uh, locations that it looks like it takes check balls, but it doesn't. I'm gonna use two uh, alignment uh, pins here, one here, one here. Uh, and get our separator 
Played gaskets. Bell body to separator plate gasket. And you cannot get it mixed up. As you see here, I mean, you can see the check ball right there. If you put this one here, there, I mean, you're gonna have a little, uh, two little holes. Those two little holes there. And uh, you know right away that that's the wrong location for it. It is a pain to get the molded gasket off of this plate. I mean, you have to use a uh, gasket removal tool, and uh, what I use is a 3M gasket remover. Get that out of the way. Go ahead and drop our spacer plate there, and uh, let's get the bolts. They go to it. Right. Three bolts. One here. One here. One here. Sorry, I don't want to be in your way. Sorry about that. All right. So uh, snug him up. Now let's get some uh, assembly loop, some trans gel, because we want to make sure that the other valve body gasket holds. Actually, I did a teardown, uh, not a teardown video, a uh, common issues video on, on this particular unit here, and uh, when I tore down, he had valve body gasket on top of the molded gaskets. I mean, that's the first time I've seen that. But this is the right way to do it. All right, we're done. We're done with this valve body. Uh, just got to put it back on the transmission and finish that transmission. And I thank you guys for watching. And if you're not subscribed yet, please subscribe. And uh, go to my channel, check out the Features Channels tab. There's some other guys that are sharing uh, transmission uh, videos as well. Alright, well this is Harm, and thanks for watching, and please, if you work uh, on valve bodies, just buy this uh, uh, Superior uh, Bench Buddies, and uh, I mean, they'll save you a lot of headaches. Polish the bores, and uh, the valves will move freely, you will have no issues. Alright, thanks for watching.